speaker is Professor Yun Ji Hong. He is currently the chair of the Department of Preventive Medicine and the director of the Institute of Environmental Medicine, Seoul National University, College of Medicine in Korea. Another topic is regional status and other cities. So this is strategy, research and knowledge for Asia Pacific region. Professor Hong, please. Thank you very much for the nice introduction and uh, thank you for the organizer for having me and this wonderful um, the symposium. And um, the, yesterday actually the, um, there were just some um, talks that focusing on the importance of um, intervention and um, the engagement in the communities. So that is our policy advocacy. So I, I really strongly believe that policy advocacy is one of the, our main principles in and the society. And the, my talk is also about the policy and the research. Um, but the policy is in the level of the Asian Pacific region, not in a uh, community level. And um, the, the, what is required um, the, about the research for the uh, translation of policy? That's the main point. Okay, so the first uh, I will uh, briefly say has impact uh, web pollution and the regional policy effort and future research uh, direction. Um, the health impact of pollution in Asia Pacific region. Uh, we again see the beautiful map, uh, which are uh, different colors. So, but at the same time, it's very sadly saying that the world is divided into many two uh, parts. Um, the, and what is unfortunate is that we believe we will stay in the bad part now. Um, so we, um, we see it's a different the colors, it's not really uh, safe to live in. But it uh, seems to be very dangerous, even the color red is beautiful. Um, so actually, the nearly all the, the very low and middle income. Um, cities in the western past region and the cities of the East Asian, um, the Asian region. That is actually the division criteria by the double used by the WHO. Um, so mostly I use the WHO data now, so that I will keep using at this time. Um, the, actually most of the cities actually uh, live in the region, the cities exceeding the WHO uh, air quality guidelines. Um, so the clearly, we also see the striking difference um, the, the regional um, uh, pollution levels. Um, the red one is the, the town and cities uh, exceeding um, the air quality guidelines of WHO. So there is a percentage. So uh, if we uh, look at the WEPRO and the Seattle, the Western Pacific region and the Southeast Asia region, WEPRO, Seattle, so almost all the towns and cities actually be exceeding um, the WHO guidelines, while the, the, the American, the, the uh, European seem to be uh, much better uh, than the Asian situation. So that, that is the current uh, status of Asia. And, um, this is uh, the, actually the WH updated the data last month, so this is a really updated one now. And uh, we, you see again um, the, um, the high concentration of PM2.5 in this region, um, the China, India, and the Middle East and Africa. Uh, but you see uh, it's uh, much better um, the area uh, in other parts. What is interesting is, um, this is uh, the area of the early civilization in the human life. So the, um, I, I don't know what, what is the coincidence uh, with the, <laughs> uh, this one. It's uh, actually um, the China uh, civilization and the India and the Mesopotamian and the <laughs> Egyptian. But that is, uh, um, do you think that is not concurrent? <laughs> I don't know the why, but I think probably that is 
aftermath of the early civilization, so that's why we have a high air pollution than PM2.5. But the, we are the epidemiologists, so the, my epidemiology instinct <laughs> uh, start to ask me why. Uh, I don't know. And uh, so the, um, the majority of the region of the world, uh, average, uh, annual average of air pollution is higher than the Southwestern guideline, with particular high exposure in the Eastern Mediterranean and the Southeast Asia and Western Pacific region. So that is the reality. And uh, now 41% of the world population has made to use solid fuel. So that is household air pollution. So this is another big one in, in our region. Um, the, by coverage of the region, Africa, 83%, and Southeast Asia, 959%, Western Pacific, 42% uh, uh, actually be showing uh, high dependency to the solid fuel. So that it causes household air pollution, and also it contributes to outdoor air pollution in some areas. So the, that is a really complicated issue in Asia. So let's see the health impact of air pollution. This is a combined air ambient and household. Um, again, the, the red color is Seattle and the Wapro. Um, and some of the high income countries in Wapro is Japan, uh, Singapore, and uh, Korea. Um, uh, it's it included in this group. But most countries in Asia, it's uh, much way high uh, compared to uh, other areas. And the, in terms of health impact, that is the number of deaths from the uh, air pollution exposure. Um, but when we age standardize, it's, um, the African region uh, going higher now. But still, the African region going higher, but still we have a very high number of the age standardized deaths per capita. Um, so 7 million deaths are attributable to the joint effect of ambient and household air pollution in 2016. And Western Pacific and Southeast Asia region bear the most of the burden with 2.2 and 2.4 million deaths respectively. And uh, the age standardized the rate, the, the WEPRO region is uh, 114 per 100,000 and the um, Seattle region 164 per 100,000. So when we divide it into the ambient air pollution and household air pollution, this is the ambient air pollution. So here we have a strikingly uh, high the number of deaths in, uh, in the Asian region. And uh, this is age, age standard died. Uh, it's uh, Africa and the uh, Middle East and uh, Asia. It's, uh, uh, really high compared to uh, America and the Europe. So that is the uh, current situation. And um, the, for ambient uh, air pollution uh, only, 4.2 4 million deaths attributable to that uh, in 2016. And Southeast Asia and Western Pacific region bear the large share of the burden with each about 1.3 million deaths. Um, this is uh, indoor, household, household air pollution. Um, the, again, the total number of deaths is strikingly high in, in our region, Seattle and Wapro. Um, when we age standardize, the age, Africa is the number one now, but still uh, we have a very high number, um, the age standardized deaths in Asia. So 3.8 million deaths are attributed to household air pollution in 2016 world. Uh, wide, um, the, and the Southeast Asian and Western Pacific region bear the most of the burden with 1.5 million and 1.2 million deaths respectively. That is the uh, current situation. Uh, when we age and die, that number is wet, wet pro is 64 per 100,000 and um, the um, CRO, the 102 per 100,000. Okay, so to address this um, this proportionate burden of disease uh, in environmental health, uh, not just air pollution, but uh, including all other environmental issues, and 
Actually, the disproportion, um, the number of deaths, is not just about air pollution. The other is called also uh, occurring disproportionation nature in Asia. So, in 2006, um, the very important activity uh, happened that is um, the Asia Pacific Regional Forum on Health and Environment. Um, but this is a picture. Uh, Two years ago, um, the to uh, to make uh, the regional um, the um, framework for environmental health in Asia Pacific region. Uh, yeah, uh, this is one of the active regional um, the forum, and the, this regional forum actually composed of the members uh, of uh, from 38 countries. The members actually ministers. So there, there are two members, uh, Minister of Environment and Minister of Health. So if this is a large and the highest body of policy, this is a maker gathering in Asia Pacific. And the UNEP, UN Environment, and the WHO, uh, CRO, and WEPRO are co-secretary to support uh, this activity. Um, the, their vision is health in, they want to put health and environment at the center of the development. So that is their vision. And their goal is to create a platform for national and regional action to enhance and safeguard health and environment and promote sustainable development. So it's a beautiful vision and beautiful goal. And uh, uh, the one important um, the body is the technical uh, working group. That is. Uh, um, the advisory group to support to make the policy uh, in this regional forum. Um, this is a meeting, a uh, thematic working group on air quality. Actually, this meeting happened at uh, Sydney last year uh, in connection with ISEE. The I, I happen to be the chair of this one, this meeting, and uh, uh, the other co chair is. Um, now, director of the Pollution Depart Control Department of Thailand, and the members of this systematic uh, working group on air pollution uh, to serve the regional forum uh, by giving the, um, the advice and the policy. The members mostly uh, the government officers, mostly the director level, uh, in charge of the air quality and air pollution issues in the countries. And the, in this meeting last year, um, we share the results of TWGA2 health impact assessment and uh, we discuss the special action to improve capacity to conduct future health impact assessment study in the region. And um, we share the information regarding current <laughs> air quality index system of the Asian Pacific countries. And also we drafted a policy brief to support policy makers. When we say policy makers, it's a high-ranking high uh, government officer uh, it's a uh, vice minister level and uh, the ministers. So th the, we prepared a uh, policy brief to support policy makers in Asia and Pacific region regarding air quality management through improved understanding of health impact of air pollution. So that is uh, uh, the last year agenda in the TWG meeting in Sydney. And to respond, uh, to the request or to respond to the necessities uh, in the region, we are launching uh, LCAP. The LCAP is the uh, Asian Initiative um, for Research on Climate and Air Pollution. So this is a launching meeting uh, in 2016 in Rome. Um, the general team and uh, yes, Honda. Uh, with, with me, the uh, founder uh, of this uh, uh, air cap. And this air cap is, is not just uh, uh, scientists gathering to research. The, one of the very important goal is to respond to the uh, request from the, um, the policy makers to provide uh, science-based evidence for the policy making. Um, this, is, uh, this year, in March, we had a uh, health impact assessment capacity building uh, provided by the LCAP uh, in joint 
with um, the Symmetry Working Group Air Quality under the Frame of Reason Forum. So they will provide technical workshop to the audience. The audience are mostly government officers who is actually in charge of the air pollution in their countries. So we have uh, almost 80 participants uh, in the region. Because they really want to know what is health impact assessment, what does the number mean. So the, um, um, and also we also had a thematic uh, working group meeting in Bangkok and uh, uh, we, uh, this uh, meeting, uh, thematic working group decided to uh, focus on uh, more attention on transboundary health impacts of air pollution in the region because uh, transboundary air pollution issues is urgent uh, but politically very much complicated. So it was not dealt uh, properly before, but now is the time to uh, give more focus on the transboundary health impact. So that is the decision uh, this year of the, the climate working group. So uh, we need to respond to requests. We are scientists, um, but when we communicate with the policy makers, we need to uh, look back ourselves first. The first is the language. Um, the language to communicate is more, uh, it's, it's much better when we use health impact than health effect. When we say, um, the length risk is 1.05 per 10 microgram per cubic meter increase. They say, what is this? What it means? Um, when he says, we often say that the large risk 1.2 uh, per interquartile range increase of PM 5 they totally don't understand what it means. But when you say, uh, in your city, 2,000 people die from air pollution every year, they clearly understand what it means. So they uh, automatically set their priority when they have their numbers. But uh, they are smart people. They don't stop at that. Uh, they ask, how can we calculate the numbers? So we say that um, with the annual average of PM2.5, and uh, we use the uh, uh, those response function, actually that we borrow from the, um, the CR function from the GBD group, uh, and uh, we have uh, some calculation. Um, they say that if we borrow the um, um, CR function, that is based on the most um, the results from American and Europeans, that is relevant. That is a question from them. Um, so it is okay to apply that function in our countries. Um, such a question, we, we need to respond to such a question. So that is a region specific issue. And also, when we the, say that we use the average 10 to 0.5 level, actually in Seoul it's 26. So we use 26. But their response, many times, we have a, some, time, some day we have a more than 100. It's not just a few, it's a many days in Seoul. But not just Seoul, but in Asia, we have a haze issue, forest fires issue, and dust and sand storms. That is about episode exposure, mostly with the transboundary nature. It's not easy to persuade them with such a health impact assessment numbers only. So that is a question now arising in the region. Probably that is a little different from the European and the, the American experience. So we need to respond it properly. <laughs> and um, the principle when we collaborate with stakeholders, I think this is very important. Engagement with stakeholders right at the beginning of the research process. So now we are working together, policy makers gathering, and the research uh, gathering. That is a, a thematic working group and the uh, LCAM now. And um, the we're developing um, the research question with the stakeholders together and uh, engage stakeholders throughout the research process. 
from the beginning to the end. So that is actually the translation research completely. So the uh, so now we set our the research direction um, to do um, the multi-city health impact study and the region specific um, CR function and transform the air uh, the pollution research. So the multi-city health impact assessment study this is ongoing, but we we are using uh, integrated exposure response function from the GDP group so far because we don't have such a function now. But we don't want to duplicate the study, the WHO and the GBD group. They actually use uh, um, the mostly uh, dependent on the modern data because the monitoring data is not really widely available in Asia. But uh, we think that monitoring data, it's better for the policy makers to take their data with the monitoring, ground monitoring data. So the, we decide to, uh, decided to use monitoring data to calculate a health impact uh, the study in major cities and sub-region uh, sub in Asia Pacific. So the, uh, we uh, borrowed a uh, CR function from the GBD group and uh, we get population structure and mortality and uh, monitoring data now. And uh, so the, the data recruitment form and uh, uh, calculation. So the, um, the last year, 16 cities joined um, the, uh, from four uh, Asian countries. It's a uh, data the last year we uh, the, the made. Um, the Ulaanbaatar is a very uh, the highest uh, exposure level. And uh, it, this is uh, the levels monitoring, uh, ground monitoring uh, data. Uh, to show the level in, in these areas. And uh, this is the uh, number of deaths. Uh, Ulaanbaato is uh, the number one, and, but unfortunately Seoul uh, is the uh, second position. But I think that this is due to the population size mostly. So um, when the age center dies, still the Ulaanbaato is number one, but the some Asian countries are pretty going high. Um, so we want to expand this one to cover all cities, all sub-regions in Asia Pacific. Um, and when we are listed the, the, by the order of the number of deaths, um, if we give this, this picture to the policy makers, they have some ideas. Um, and uh, they may ask something, or they may, um, they may give us some grant to do study more. <laughs> so the, this is uh, uh, that purpose. Um, and uh, now we are expanding, and the current data very uh, recently Japan joined, so now it's uh, almost 40 cities uh, joined, uh, and uh, we, we are going to expand more. Uh, second one is uh, uh, the region specific CR functions. Asia region, as we understand, that the relatively high air pollution compared to Western countries, but um, the chronic health effects studies are lacking now. The GDP group actually developed uh, into IER function to cover the whole range, but they need to borrow the data from uh, second and smoke, um, the household solid cooking uh, fuel and active smoke. So that's why this is the integrated one. Um, but still the question is, the concentration of function from Western countries is applicable to this region. So that is not just scientific question. Actually, the policy maker directly ask us uh, if can be uh, applied in their countries. Um, so this is a area function. Um, uh, they, uh, this, they actually update it considering the population age. Uh, so they, this is update one. But still there is a question, uh, as you said. And, uh, but one a very important paper came out from China that is a long-term uh, fine particle net exposure and cause specific mortality, the so long-term uh, studies. Um, because China is a big country, so their exposure range is really wide. So they, they can make their own exposure response function with China data. So this is their exposure response function. 
but it's a little different from the IER. Um, the, the green one is estimated um, the, head, the head of the ratio when you apply the IER function from GBD group. But red one is the child's data. So you, we can see uh, difference. We can see difference. So that actually difference um, the gives give us a question again. The IR function from the GBD group can be applicable, can be applied to our region. Maybe not, but here this is only one study, so we don't know. Um, so now we uh, want to uh, have more data in, in this region. So with a harmonized analytic uh, method, um, but the, our principle is to um, the respect individual study results. We want to combine after the publication. So now the uh, six studies um, the express um, interest to join our meta-analysis. Uh, it's um, the Australia, Japan, and India, and the Korea. So the priority if uh, we have such a uh, meta-analysis data, uh, probably we can say something uh, on the regional specific issues. So that is what we are going to do uh, now. And um, the third one is transbound air pollution. Uh, two years ago, it's a really beautiful paper came out. Uh, that is a uh, public health impact of severe haze. That is a haze health impact. Um, in Equatorial Asia, I think this is, um, this is a new term to me, but I think that is Southeast Asia. Um, the, but they actually, the, um, this is a uh, episode in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's commonly occurring, I think, the, you, you, um, people from the Indonesia and Malaysia and Singapore may uh, see this one um, frequently. Uh, depending on the season. The paper suggests a new analysis framework to rapid assess the emission source and health impact of a haze episode um, by uh, incorporating foreign information. That is um, fire particle, fire, fire emission related to land carbon land use, meteorological drivers, domestic and transboundary source receptor relationship, and health impact function incorporating visual specific mortality rate, age structure, and population. So they actually uh, based on applied health impact assessment on the haze, that is uh, the episodic issues. So that is uh, beautifully uh, they uh, describe that this is uh, the smoke emission, uh, mostly pit fire and forest fire in um, mostly Indonesia. And um, the this one is Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia data. It's about uh, uh, contribution from the region. They it actually shows that neighboring countries actually migrate, uh, the emission from the neighboring country migrate to other countries. So, um, and they calculate um, health impact. The number, excess number, Indonesia is 91,000, Malaysia 2,300, Singapore 2,200. So, I think this is a very important the paper to show the direction um, the of health impact assessment in, in the region. So now, the, uh, again, AirTab is uh, planning to do the, the uh, collaboration research on HACE. Um, they, they, we conducted a pilot study in Malaysia, calculated the number of premature deaths uh, during, um, due to the 2015 Indonesian forest fire. In Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, Singapore are joining in the workshop. And now we are planning to conduct uh, the, um, the uh, detailed health impact assessment of uh, fire smoke in, in the region. But not just um, East Asian forest fires matter. Uh, East Asian dust storm is another big issue in the North Asian countries, China, Mongolia, Korea, Japan. Taiwan as well. So the, it's a really big issue. We need to also uh, conduct health impact assessment 
uh, from the bhistation.com and the Hindu Kush Himalaya smoke is another another one that is also that is really huge so the uh, concentration wise it's uh, really um, worse I guess and uh, we also need to conduct uh, transboundary air pollution issue. So this is the uh, end of my presentation. Thank you. Actually, the, uh, the, my presentation uh, is about uh, AirCap activity now. So the, I hope you join uh, AirCap to work together. So this is the website. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.